Welcome to Lesson 8.11 and 8.12, wrapping up the Constitutional Convention. Let's begin, shall we? At the end of the summer, the delegates decided a few items. Of course, this after everyone, for the most part, agreed upon their new form of government, the Constitution. They first off decided that nine out of the 13 states would need to approve the new Constitution before it came into law. They also said the Constitution would need to be ratified by the people. Lunchtime. However, 13 people left the convention before it actually ended. E. Jerry left the Constitutional Convention because he felt people's rights were not protected enough by the new Constitution. And then George Mason left because he felt the federal government was given way too much power compared to the states. Even though these people left, the Constitution was a hit. They also decided that delegates from each from different states would be elected by the people and would sign the new Constitution at a special election. Even though the majority of the delegates to the Constitutional Convention wanted the Constitution to be ratified, there was still opposition to it. Because remember, 13 people left. The people who wanted the Constitution signed were known as the Federalists. Federalists worked hard to get the Constitution ratified by their fellow American citizens. You see, Federalists wanted a strong central and federal government because they remembered what happened underneath the Articles of Confederation and how the government and the country itself really did not function as well as it could have. The Federalists also had another answer to people who feared that the federal government would be too strong and too powerful. You see, they felt the Constitution limited the government, not the people and their rights. And they felt that the government would not be too strong because, remember, it was split into three different branches. They also felt as though the Constitution would unite the states. It wouldn't separate them. Finally, a group of men created something called the Federalist Papers. These are essays to convince people that the Constitution was a good theme. James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and John Jay were three of the authors who contributed to the Federalist Essays, which had a huge hand in convincing people that the Constitution was thumbs up awesome. Now, there were those against the Constitution. This group of people were called the Anti-Federalists, and they did not want the Constitution ratified. And they had three reasons why they didn't. First, they felt as though there was too much power given to the federal government compared to the state's government. They felt the federal government would become too big and would hog all the power. <laughs> in aside, we are going to learn later in the quarter that this was not entirely true, that there were safeguards put in place so this wouldn't happen. They also felt that there, felt that there was a potential that one of the branches of the government would get too strong and would dominate one of the others. Say maybe the legislative branch, the Congress, would become too powerful and would stop the judicial, which are the judges, or the executive, which was the president, from doing their job. They felt that there was a document needed saying what the government could and could not do. Finally, and, and this about kind of sums up everything, Anti-Federalists didn't want to change the Articles of Confederation. These were a group of men that truly felt that the states should be independent, that they should have more power or more influence than the federal government. And the Constitution really put more focus and more power into the hands of the federal government. Well, 10 months after the Constitutional Convention, ended, meaning December 7th, 1787, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Georgia ratified the Constitution in their state special sessions. That's five of the needed states ratifying the Constitution. Now, Massachusetts was kind of a, a big player in, in politics, and they didn't like this new plan of government because they felt there was no protections for citizens' rights. And they felt also that states didn't have enough power. 
Now, they did say that they would ratify the Constitution if amendments were added. February 1788, Massachusetts finally did ratify the Constitution because they were promised that there would be amendments for people's rights added to the Constitution. Maryland and South Carolina quickly followed Massachusetts. That meant there were now eight of the nine needed states who had ratified the Constitution. June 21, 1788, New Hampshire ratified it. Yay! Woohoo! That's nine of the states ratifying the Constitution. Everybody celebrate! I'm getting a little carried away, I'm sorry. The government under the Constitution, the new plan of their government, would officially begin April 4th, 1789. Well, September 25th, 1789, the amendments to the Constitution were sent to the states to ratify. That would be the Bill of Rights, which we'll learn about in Chapter 9. In 1791, 10 out of the 12 states had okayed the new Constitution. Virginia and New York were the 10th and 11th states, respectively. That meant there was two states left that had to ratify. Well, North Carolina became the 12th state to ratify the Constitution, which meant there was one state left. Remember that one state that didn't send, a, didn't send delegates to the Constitutional Convention? Do you remember the name of that state? Rhode Island. Rhode Island rejected the Constitution at first. Remember, they were fiercely independent. They didn't want to be overwhelmed by bigger states. There also was this deal about money and that they had printed a lot of their own money. They were the last holdout. However, the United States of America threatened to stop trading with Rhode Island if they wouldn't ratify the Constitution. If you don't ratify it, Rhode Island, Mr. Mint, I'm not going to trade with you anymore. Boo. May 29th, 1790, Rhode Island was the 13th and final state to ratify the Constitution, and they joined it, just barely, by two votes. Why don't you take a look at this comic that would have been put out back in the day. It states, United we stand, divided we fall. And here are 12, actually all 13 pillars, all 13 states. And you notice something about this last one right here? R.I. Rhode Island. Interesting. Thank you for watching this flipped video. The homework questions are on Edmodo. What I would like you to do for an extra credit opportunity is send me an email letting me know what you think about how the federal government handled the issue of Rhode Island not ratifying the Constitution and the fact that the government had to really threaten Rhode Island. Do you think it was okay for the U.S. to threaten Rhode Island into signing the Constitution or voting for it? This comic here, United We Stand, Divided We Fall, do you think that's really true? Would the government have fallen without Rhode Island being a part of our country? I'm curious on your thoughts. Thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow in class.